Now, numerous studies have shown there is a close correlation between alcohol abuse, hypoglycemia, and criminal behavior. If you look at the most violent felons in prison, most of them are hypoglycemic, most of them are alcohol abusers. And we know that those violent felons, when they drink alcohol, their blood sugar falls tremendously. They're getting a hyperreactive effect from the alcohol. And I remember a young man in my practice one time came in and he had lost all the vision and half of his visual field. He couldn't see anything on one side. And what happened is he was drinking, his blood sugar fell, it fell so low he went into a coma and he had a stroke on one side of his brain in the visual portion of his brain. And that happens. And young people don't know that can happen, but it, it's not that uncommon. You can have seizures and you can die during these spells. An interesting correlation between alcoholism and hypoglycemia, in the study they found 97% of alcoholics were hypoglycemic, uh, compared to 18% for the control. And the reason the alcoholic continues to drink alcohol is because the alcohol is a source of tremendous energy. And so when their blood sugar falls, they drink the alcohol, they feel better, and their blood sugar falls again, they drink more alcohol, and it's just an unending cycle. Now this is what happens when you treat the hypoglycemia. They found that if they treated the hypoglycemia, 71% of alcoholics became sober. Alcoholics Anonymous' best rate is only 25%. So correcting one condition corrected another condition. And if you look at the FBI statistics, most of the violent crimes in the United States are connected to alcohol. Most of your auto accidents are connected to alcohol. Most of your road rage are connected to alcohol because it's producing the same effect that the sugar's producing. Now, the most aggressive effects of this is in people who have abnormalities of the temporal lobe of the brain. The temporal lobe is not just for memory, but it's the elaboration center for your emotion. Particularly things like anger. Connects to the amygdala, the nucleus in the brain, and has to do with anger. And we find that if people with temporal lobe dysfunction become hypoglycemic, they become enraged. Uh, these are the people who have road rage. These are the people who, in a uh, moment of anger, stomp somebody to death or picks up a knife and stabs somebody to death, just out of the blue. For th things that are so minor, most of us would just shrug it off, but they don't. Because it triggers their temporal lobe, their anger centers in their temporal lobe, and they lose all control. We call it the discontrolled syndrome. And working in emergency rooms for many, many years, I can tell you, all the alcoholics I saw come in, some of the most violent people were the alcoholics. And it would take everybody in the emergency room to hold them down. They had tremendous strength, and they were like enraged animals. And that's why you see these things, a road rage, that when you hear about it, you think, how could someone do that? Well, it's not a conscious act of them doing it. It's the fact that you have lowered their blood sugar or had an effect uh, of one of these nutrients on their brain function that drives them like wild animals.